Hi, and welcome to the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance. Today, I want to figure out what's wrong with this Apple II from the Media Archaeology Lab. So, let's get started. Let's go ahead and turn on the Apple II and see what's wrong with it. So when I flip the switch on, I get the beep, which is good. But if you look closely, the characters are actually split in half. So it says Apple II, but the top half of the character is actually repeated. So you're not seeing the bottom of each character. This is even more apparent if we just, say, go into the monitor and then just do a list. So you can see that all of the characters are all goofed up. So you only see the top of each character and then the bottom is just repeated. If we take a look at the problem with this Apple II, the characters are split in half and the top half of the character is repeated on the bottom. So this seems to indicate that something's wrong with the vertical addressing. If we look at the Apple II circuit description by Winston Gaylor, on page 110, it talks about how the vertical addressing for video is used to generate characters. So there's six lines, V0 through V5, which are used to address where you are on the screen in the vertical direction. And then there's three more control lines, VA, VB, VC, and these control which part of the character gets drawn. So VA is the low bit, VB is the middle bit, and then VC is the high bit for this. And so VC controls whether it's the top half or the bottom half of the character that's drawn. And so now looking at the schematic diagram for the Apple II, this is the sync counter here for drawing the video display. Line VC here is pin 13 on chip D12. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at what's coming out of pin D12 here using the oscilloscope. To diagnose what's going on with the vertical addressing, I'm gonna go ahead and use this Tektronix 2205 oscilloscope that my brother-in-law donated to the Media Archaeology Lab. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna wire it up to the board here. And I put the ground line onto a capacitor here that's attached to the ground on the Apple II logic board. And then we're just gonna use the probe to check for correct signals. So according to the schematic, those vertical address lines, VA, VB, and VC, come off of chips D13 and D12. On chip D13, VA is at pin 11. So let's go ahead and look at that one. So here's D13, and pin 11 should be 9, 10, 11. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put the probe there on pin 11. And then looking at the oscilloscope, you can see we have a nice clean signal. It goes from about zero to 4.5 volts. Now, let's go ahead and we'll look at line VB. So this should be the second vertical address line, and this is on chip D12, pin 14. So here is D12 right here, and pin 14, so this is 16, 15, 14. So we'll just put the probe right there. And you can see, again, VB looks good. It goes from zero to 4.5. It's now half the frequency of VA, which makes sense. And then finally, let's take a look at VC. So this should be the lowest frequency or longest period. And this is the one that controls which half of the character, the top or bottom half. And so that's D12 pin 13. So again, 16, 15, 14, 13. So we'll put our probe right there. And now when we look at the oscilloscope, you can see, you can see that the voltage only goes from zero to one, even though the frequency is correct. So that's not gonna be enough to actually drive any of the other chips. And so this could explain our problem. That vertical address signal connects six chips on the Apple II board. D12, the video address generator, H1, which is a RAM select, C12, which connects high res to RAM, A5, which is the character generator, B14, the video sync, and then finally A8, which is video clock timing. I have an almost identical Rev4 that I got from the Media Lab, so I tried swapping out individual chips to see if that fixed the problem, but it didn't seem to help. So what I decided to do was just a Hail Mary, and I actually took all six chips out that are related to that VC line. So let's go ahead and do that now. Just what do you think you are doing, Chris? Here's all the chips I've taken out. H1, D12, A8, A5, B14, C12. Let's go ahead and, and we'll replace these with known good ones from the other board and see what happens. All right, the moment of truth, all six chips have been swapped, and voila, everything works. 
So we see Apple II, it's not split in half, the cursor looks correct. So at least one of those chips is bad. Just to confirm that everything's working properly, let's go ahead and look at the signals with the oscilloscope. So we'll start again with VA. Okay, there we go, it goes from about zero to 4.5 at a certain frequency. Then we'll take a look at VB, which is on chip D12 at pin 14. And that looks good, it's half the frequency, but again, zero to 4.5 volts. And then finally, we'll look at the troublesome one, which was VC, and again, that was chip D12 pin 13. And now you can see it's half the frequency, but the voltage now goes from zero to 4.5, which looks great, and of course, everything's actually working properly. Using the circuit diagram for the Apple II as well as the oscilloscope, we were able to diagnose the problem to one of the vertical address lines, specifically line VC, which controls which half of the character is being drawn. So what I ended up doing is actually taking all six chips out, and then I tried to use the multimeter to just ohm things out to see if there was any short between any of the pins, but I couldn't find anything. So then I just decided, well, I would just swap out all six chips from a known good one. When I did that, everything started working. So then I just started replacing the chips one at a time until it failed. And it turned out that there were two chips that failed. One of them was at H1, which is an LS08, and the other one was at C12, which was an LS257. I think what happened was in the Media Archaeology Lab, we were trying to fix the keyboard, and so we kept plugging and unplugging it, and so we probably had a static discharge, which just happened to fry both of those chips because they're connected to the same address line. The moral of the story is be sure to use wrist straps or other safeguards against static discharge. And then also don't assume that it's just one chip that's blown because it actually might be more than one. Now that I've fixed the problem, I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble the computer and bring it back to the Media Archaeology Lab. So, thanks for watching.